Hi, welcome back. Uh, way back in June I gave you a teaser about the burnout kiln that I've been working on. Um, it's for doing lost PLA casting, so you print uh, your pattern in uh, PLA on the 3D printer, um, encase it in a sort of ceramic coating, um, and then that goes into the burnout kiln, you burn it out, you then have a hollow mould which you can pour metal into. Um, I pointed at it briefly on the, the shop tour the other day, um, but it's time to have a, a bit of a closer look. Now it's quite a big beast, so it's quite difficult to get the whole thing in shot. Um, so it's sat on a angle, um, angle iron trolley, basically, um, with four casters on. They're all um, omnidirectional casters. Two of them have got brakes on, so it means I can just push it around and manoeuvre it nice and easily. Um, the structure is made out of a material I forget the name of. I'll try and put it up on the um, up here. Um, it's a very soft um, sort of blue powdery material with some sort of fibres in it to reinforce it. Um, but it's incredibly good at insulating the the heat from the inside. Now this was necessary because the original uh, kiln that I built was hoping that um, a layer of fire bricks on the inside and some vermiculite cement would be enough but it was nowhere near enough to keep the heat in uh, it was getting far too hot on the outside so I had to give it some extra layers of insulation let's just take a look inside so that's the underside of the lid which has got the fire bricks um, a layer of this blue material and then another two layers of this blue material and then inside you can see we have the inner cavity which is still the same fire bricks in the metal um, incinerator basket um, that I originally made it in. We've got the, uh, the heater wire in there. Then beyond that I've got a layer of glass fibre insulation all the way around followed by panels of the blue stuff around the outside. Um, so it's, it's got several layers of insulation now and actually it doesn't get too hot. Uh, even when it's been running for many hours. The, the silver aluminium tape is really just to cover the joins of this blue material. I did sort of cement it together with high temperature cement, but um, not very nice, you know, to look at. So uh, the, the, the silver tape, the aluminium tape, just finishes it off a little bit. The whole thing is controlled by this little computer here. I'll just turn it on. So when it turns on, you greet it with a... Um, menu where it detects the profile files that are um, stored on it um, you can connect to it with a little USB connector which goes in in that hole somewhere to put different profiles on these are all just test ones really um, and then you just select the one you want so we'll have that one just as an example and then it puts the um, the profile on the screen that it's going to follow um, and uh, it begins the process it uses a thermocouple, um, which is here. This is a K-type thermocouple, which is good for 1,000 degrees, I believe. Um, I only intend to take this up to about 800 tops, um, maybe 850. Uh, I could easily um, write a profile for doing, say, heat treatment or tempering or something like that. Um, so I'll have, I will look at doing that. I want to try it on the PLA first because um, that was what we built it for. I'm sure I'll try it out with a bit of heat treatment at some stage. So the, the computer module is a Raspberry Pi Pico um, and it's using a an OLED display uh, with four buttons on it and an LED um, which was from uh, Pi Moroni I think. I'm using a thermocouple interface to connect to the thermocouple which basically just does all the hard work of converting the the, the tiny voltage you get off the thermocouple into a digital output, so I just read out the temperature. Um, the Pico then controls a big solid state relay, uh, which is attached to this heatsink. That's the bit that gets hot, basically. Um, and that just turns the coil on and off. There's no um, PID loop or any sort of clever control, it is just a bang bang thermostat type controller but so far it seems to be pretty reliable and it doesn't really overshoot I think 
it's kind of underpowered but it, it, it still gets up to temperature uh, it just takes a while but based on the profile that I've seen for the the plaster that I'm going to put the PLA in it's more than quick enough the the ramp rate for the plaster is very very slow um, other things to note um, the cable that I'm using with it is two and a half square millimeter cable which is a bit on the big side for a, a regular 13 amp plug I think they're normally designed to take one and a half square millimeter but um, I originally had I think it was 1.25 um, and it was it was actually getting pretty warm when it was running you know three kilowatts almost continuously so I decided to upgrade the cable um, I haven't actually tried this out yet not for the not for any long period of time so um, but it's nearly twice the size so it should be a lot better okay I mean other than that there's not a lot to see it's it's a box with some wires in and a little computer that turns them on and off hopefully in the new year I will be doing some PLA burnout and casting with it I shall do a video on that the plan is to cast these manifold um, patterns which you know which might be a little ambitious um, but what could possibly go wrong I hope that was vaguely interesting sorry I haven't actually done anything with it yet to uh, demonstrate it um, I mean it has been run up it does get hot it reaches I think we've got to had it reach we've definitely had it up to 800 degrees before um, so it's basically ready to go and it just needs me to pull my finger out and do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.